Hey there, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back. A few months ago, I had mentioned that I was putting together notes on some of the things that we've been doing to manage our woodlot with the goal of turning it into a productive agroforestry slash food forest type of ecosystem for us. Um, first note, doing this in an established woodlot is more difficult than doing it in an open field. If you're still interested in making something like this look a little bit more the way you like, we may have some notes for you. The first thing to keep in mind is that everything in the forest is planted by deposition. That means all the branches, bits of bark, logs, full trees that fall, everything gets dropped on the ground, and then seeds get dropped, and then leaves get dropped. And then the following year, some of those seeds will sprout. Sometimes you'll get little clusters at the bases of some trees. But everything is pretty starved for light. So the way that nature drops all of these is either through rot, wind, or fire generally speaking. Ice weight, heavy rainstorms, things like that will also drop things, but the forest does everything by dropping organic material and then growing out of the top of it. Some of these structures are referred to as pillows and cradles or pits and mounds. Like when a tree falls over, uproots a bit of the root, we'll have some fresh ground, but then this structure will slowly get more and more organic material piling on top of it until seeds have a proper place and environment for them to sprout. Then they'll start growing out of the tree trunks and the downed wood material, similar to the way that our hoogle mounds do which is kind of where they came from. But if nature is not doing it for you, and you're going to be doing it, you're going to have to plan your disturbances. You're going to have to figure out which trees to drop when and where. And so I have some considerations for you. Our first step is making up access paths. Some of these were already here. Some of them had to be made. However, making sure that we had an ease of access into the woods so that we could actually work on the project without having to hack and slash our way there each day was our first goal. So we took out some of the trees that were blocking existing paths, widening them out to about the space to accommodate two people with wheelbarrows or a tractor. Laneways like this. Pathways like this. And pathways like that. Once you've got some paths set and you can actually come in and work, I recommend dropping standing dead trees that have very little in the way of habitat space. So, for example, this tree right in front of us, this guy right here, you can see a lot of dead branches, and it's not until we get up to the top that we have just a little bit of green. So, this tree is not doing too much. It is holding some of the soil stable, but this would be a good candidate for dropping. Likewise, this one behind it, I'll follow it up. And you can see it's only once we hit about 20 feet in the air that it has any kind of green structure to it. 
So we've taken down a few of these, um, the ones that were too close together. You can see some of the woodlot that we haven't yet managed. There are large trees within two to three feet of each other. Many of them had looked like this guy, where he just kind of stops dead. So we've been taking those out, cutting them down, and making berms to help. One of the things that our site has, I guess, going for it is that between the high point up at the top of the property and the low point down by the pond, there's about 60-ish feet of elevation drop. So we have a pretty steep site as far as the woodlot goes. Um, and everything on our site comes from the high point, which is up that way. Tops out just past the neighbor's house at about 340 feet elevation. Uh, and then down back behind us is about 260 to 280, depending on where you take the measurement. So we are working with a lot of hugel mounds and berms to try and catch some of this runoff. All of our water is coming from up there, this way. So our hugels are mostly on contour, but pitched slightly back towards the incline so that if it does escape and come down, it will come back this way. And we can catch more of it more effectively. You'll notice I've left some of the stumps here, and that is to help us pin and secure our hugel mountains. Once this is all capped and planted into, these will not be dangerous, and any that we decide not to use for bracing of our downed logs and trees will be cut off flush to prevent any kind of tripping or impalement hazard. But the majority of what we've been doing is just taking out thin, scraggly trees that have no real benefit as far as being able to support a large colony of pollinators or bird housing. If they are too dry and you are in a fire-prone area, it's probably worth taking them out and making biochar out of them in a controlled setting. That's what we've been doing with some of the drier trees. We'll be redepositing some of that biochar back in here. The challenge with woodlots is that many of the roots of these trees are actually penetrating into the litter that they drop. So digging in a forest is particularly challenging. You can see I've got all of these roots all over the place. So if we were to dig in and start trying to drop in plants, we're going to cut away some of the roots that are supporting our canopy trees and the things we're trying to keep. So a lot of our plan is to either plant bare root so that we are not potting and burying large groups of dirt. We can just kind of do a smaller bare root, cut in the dirt, pack everything back, stamp it down, and we'll be good to go. So these are the first notes. I'll be talking more about some of the other considerations as we go. But for now, which of your trees are most likely to fall? Which ones are the dangerous? Which ones are the ones you want to keep? Start making an inventory so that you can accurately and effectively drop the trees in the most useful way to you. Start piling up some of that leaf litter so that you can have controlled growing spaces as you build out your food forest. That's our note for today. Hope you're all doing well and your gardens are happy. Till we see you again. Happy planting.